Mike was a, uh, a, a different type of a, of a coach. Uh, very religious. Uh, rarely did we ever hear him say a curse word. Okay? Uh, he was tough, but he was fair. And uh, the atmosphere in, in the town, um, I won't say it was mediocre, but it was kind of in between. Okay, because we come off some, some had some losing seasons. In fact, at one time, uh, we had the, the longest losing streak in the country. Uh, it was prior to, to my arrival. And uh, we extended that, I think, for a few games before we got on the winning track. Uh, just trying to think now. We, uh, our, I'd say our best year was 1966. We were 7-3. and three. And uh, we had uh, some, some real good wins. Uh, we actually lost three games that we should not have lost. That was a season that we could have really gone undefeated, quite honestly. And we turned it around after we played the University of Tulsa, in Tulsa. And I think we lost that game by maybe less than a touchdown. And in our hearts, we knew we were a better team than we had played that day. And that was a turnaround. On September 9, 1966, Christmas came early. The Commission of Higher Education gave final approval for a new 30,000-seat football stadium for Colorado State University. The field would be located two miles west of campus in the foothills below Horsetooth Reservoir on land that the school already owned. The fact that they already owned the land and the other locations proposed would have come with numerous problems prompted the administration to use that location. Also, a proposed Interstate 25 bypass that would have run around the western side of Fort Collins would have passed directly in front of the location, and that sweetened the deal for the West Foothills. However, that bypass never materialized. Even though the new stadium would not be built for two more years, the players and fans were invigorated by its announcement. When they made that announcement, it was a big deal. Uh, I was graduating, so my personal thoughts were, hey, this is great, you know, for the guys coming in. So I was enthusiastic, maybe not as much enthusiastic had I had a chance to play at a new stadium. Despite the news, the 1966 season was still to be played on deplorable Colorado Field. As Coach Lude began his fifth season, he had what looked to be his best offense and a good defense. Oscar Reed and Jim Oliver returned to provide a potent backfield behind quarterback Bob Wolf. The Rams started the season 2-2, two two, leading into an October 29th matchup with the 10th ranked Wyoming Cowboys. The Cowboys were 6-0 going into the game and were heavy favorites. The preparation for that game was no fear. Uh, Coach Lude had done just an exceptional job getting us to that point. The game was a hard-fought defensive affair where the usually potent Wyoming offense was held to their lowest point total of the season, even after they scored on the opening drive of the game. A couple of costly fumbles that the Rams recovered also added to Wyoming's troubles. Late in the third quarter, with the Rams trailing 7-3, Coach Lou decided to pull out a trick play, known in CSU football lore as the bounce pass. That had been practiced all week. I only had one opportunity to practice that and it did not work. <laughs> Larry Jackson was the man to do that play and he and Tom Pack worked it to perfection. The first part of the play called for quarterback Bob Wolf to throw the ball backwards at the feet of Larry Jackson who would catch it on the bounce. However, on the first attempt, Wolf threw the ball too high right to Jackson who caught it and tried to make at least a yard or two. Now on fourth down, the Rams tried again. This time, Wolf bounced the ball to Jackson, who caught it on the bounce. Jackson then pretended to be angry before throwing the ball to a wide open Tom Pack, who took it in for a touchdown. The Rams would miss the extra point, but still had a 9 to 7 lead. And everybody felt just as indicated by the players that, oh my God, another incomplete pass. And that was my feeling. I was not really even realizing that it was still a live ball. And all of a sudden you see uh, there's a receiver in the end zone, and, and Tom Pack is receiving a, a pass, and, uh, and we have a touchdown. And uh, it was really, uh, I guess, remarkable, and I, I can still recall the feeling that I'm not sure what I just saw. However, the game was not done yet. 
and neither was Wyoming. The Rams' lead was short-lived, as the Cowboy offense finally showed some light and marched down the field. But the Rams' defense would only hold them to a field goal. The Rams would have one last chance for a comeback when they drove to the Wyoming 15-yard line thanks to a spectacular catch by Larry Jackson on a fourth down play. Al Levon would retake the lead with a field goal of his own. Al was a, was, was a great kicker for us, uh, and uh, he was ready. Uh, pacing the sidelines, I, I, I can still see us now going, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. And uh, we weren't high-fiving at that time. We were just, hey man, go, you know, do this, you can, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, those kind of things. And just really pumping ourselves up, okay? When the time came uh, for Al to go in to to kick that field goal, we were ready. I mean, everybody was ready. We were jumping up and down on the sidelines. I mean, we knew that Al could make this. Confidence level was just out of this world. And of course, when he made the kick, it was all over. And much like the great 1955 DU game where the winning points were not saved on film, neither was Levon's game-winning field goal. Trailing 12 to 10 with not much time left, Wyoming still had a chance. However, Ram safety Bill Kishman came down with a late interception to seal the victory. A few kneel downs that show how hard the game was fought ran all the time off the clock. Fans stormed the field as their Rams had beaten the 10th ranked Cowboys. The loss to the Rams was the only defeat of the Cowboys in the season as they would finish 10 and one and be ranked number 15 in the nation. CSU was now sitting at four and two and getting national attention with their win over Wyoming. They would win the next two games to put them at six and two with a bowl game in sight. However, a crushing loss to Wichita State dashed those dreams. The Rams would finish out the year with a lopsided win over Iowa State for a seven and three record. It was Mike Lude's only winning season as the Rams coach. Oscar Reed broke the school's single season rushing record for the second year in a row, as well as set the all-time career rushing record to that date, with one year to play. He also received the Sports Illustrated Back of the Week award for his 194-yard effort against West Texas State. With many players returning for 1967, the last year of Colorado Field, there was hope for a strong year to send off the old lumberyard.